In the physical commodities trading world, unlike an investment bank, there is no back, middle and front office division of labour, class, equality and salary. An investment bank likes to have a back office, a place where all the nitty gritty of trade reconciliation and such tasks are completed. These chores are now routinely outsourced to India, where a willing population provides abundant cheap labour with an unnerving pursuit to not waste precious time thinking in their job. Rather, an adoration of following orders and flowcharts signifies the foundation of a meaningful career. Then, there is the middle office, filled with those irritating accountant, lawyer and risk management types. The sort of highly educated retards who like to think they're entitled to hefty paychecks, even though their contribution to the wealth creation component of entrepreneurship is non-existent. They stitch designer labels onto their cheap suits, buy the highest quality fake Rolexes, visit art galleries, watch foreign films, spend the majority of their workday planning trips to Cinque Terre, frowning at their share portfolios at a Netflix planets, or a return to university to study something meaningful. Most assuredly, these fine folk always turn up to work functions with their drinking shoes on if, and only if, the tab is to be footed by a director. Real salt of the earth types in the middle office. Then you have the front office with the analysts, brokers, traders and deal makers. The 5% of the bank's population tasked with feeding fat profits to the remaining 95%. Through a combination of front running and colluding, blatant lying and reckless punting, clever manipulating and occasional brown paper bag filled inducement levering to the regulation controllers of officialdom. You know, the typical foundations of successful capitalism and the ruthless upholding of the best interests of the shareholders. What would the world come to if concern ever veered from the best interests of those noble shareholders? And let's not forget that other defining characteristic of an investment bank, the most aptly named Chinese wall, a wondrous wall designed to keep all those filthy Mongolians out and never let traders talk shop with the merger and acquisition folk. There's a conflict of interests apparently, though their collective salaries and bonuses are drawn from the same dollar mine, interestingly enough. No, the wall is insurmountable, of course it is, it must be. Just Google any random graph of a company's stock price against the news release parameter you'll find a remarkably unavoidable trend. A stock price's sharp rise or drastic fall, always, every single time, always precedes the release of news. Precedes it, always. How strange. What a coincidence. It wouldn't be like the Chinese to build a faulty wall, would it? The commodities trading world is an entirely different beast. There is no peculiar division of labour into front, middle, back, sideways, diagonal or oblique office environments. Not here. There are traders. Unsurprisingly, they trade. Buy something, sell something, buy something else, sell it, hopefully, for them, at a profit. If not, adios, amigo. They don't sit in some ornate front office with Greek gods, crystal balls and polished knobs. They're here in the same corporate den as everyone else, overwhelmed by enough computer screens to ensure Bill Gates's pension fund remains in strong shape and saddled with the expectation of alchemy every single day. Turn nothing into something make wads of profit appear from thin air. How hard can it be? The traders seem predominantly to sit right next to their operator. An operator appears to be a logistics expert. Sleeves rolled up, pencil in the ear, belly overhanging the belt. They're tasked with knowing precisely when and where a vessel is due to arrive, whether all the correct paperwork is dotted and crossed with I's and T's, and most importantly, is the oil or metal or whatever the commodity is meant to be, is it precisely what has been agreed to in the contract? If the assay is indeed of a higher grade than anticipated and contractually agreed, button the lip, pray the counterparty doesn't notice and report the profit, alchemy complete, gainful employment insured for another day. If the assay report shows an inferior speck of material, shout loud, shout fucking loud, and make sure the counterparty stumps up a fortune to compensate, or simply refuse to accept the off-spec shit. Let them know you have good friends in low places who aren't afraid to get the message across in medieval terms of communication. Owing to the fact that physical commodities on the whole are shipped around the world, there's a large chartering team. Some commodities are obviously transported by rail, truck, wheelbarrow, whatever pleb device you can put wheels on. But we're big boys here, big swingers. We ship shit. We ship a global. So we need a group of drastically overpaid taxi booking agents for giant tankers filled with oil, copper, iron ore, coal. For some reason I'm unaware of, chartering is an empire almost entirely full of Danish natives. The Great Danes have some affinity with shipping, like Australians with barbecues, Brazilians with waxing, and Colombians with cartels. Enough about them. Let's focus on me. I'm three hours deep into my deals desk career. The deals desk role involves overseeing every aspect of a trader's specific portfolio of deals. 
This comprises trade reconciliation, risk reporting, cost forecasting of all aspects associated with each trade, ensuring trade contracts are watertight, creating and executing the appropriate hedging plan to offset any pricing risk throughout the trade's life from agreement to delivery, and most critically, being able to answer any questions a trader may have regarding his cargoes within nanoseconds. If this were an investment bank, I would be tiptoeing between the front, middle and back offices like a financial vigilante ballerina by performing all these tasks from the one desk. Here though, no one blinks. The conflict of being able to complete the hedging trades for a deal while also filing risk reports and making cost forecasts does not appear to bother anyone in this office. So I can only assume it bothers no one in the other commodities trading firms and multinational oil behemoths. Fair enough. Investment banks employ far too many people anyway. I'm happy to see a dozen roles absorbed into one. Jana is in charge of the deals desk team. The bags under her eyes now make a lot more sense. Her team comprises eight super bright young people overseeing every trade completed across all components of the oil barrel, from crude to gasoline to NAFTA. NAFTA. That realm my interviewer Pranav is apparently so gifted at. Where is that little prick anyway? Christian tells me there are 30 oil traders in the Singapore office, meaning there's no shortage of work for the deals desk team to fuck up and Jana to be responsible for. Essentially, a trader will try to swiftly double-check the likely profitability of a deal with his allotted deals desk member before executing it, and will then proceed or not with the deal, usually with the counterparty simultaneously on the end of the phone or some online messenger device. It's important to clarify these aren't insignificant sums involved. To charter a tanker, fill it up with some form of oil, insure the lot, hedge the pricing risk, yada, yada, yada. The usual dollar commitment can range from 10 to $100 million. And this isn't a foreign exchange dealing desk. It's very unlikely you've got a phone in each hand with a willing buyer on the one line and a keen seller on the other. Simply quote each party a tidy little spread, seal the deal, clip the profit and hit off to lunch, clicking your heels together while singing along to Tina Turner's Simply the Best. No, your chartered tanker full of purchased oil with borrowed cash is most likely going to be sitting in the watery abyss of the Atlantic, Pacific or Indian for a short while, before knowing exactly where the, with any fucking luck, profitable delivery destination is. With all this at stake, a deals desk role carries with it the high probability of being physically beaten to a pulp if you report incorrectly to the trader. Fuck him, he'll fuck you. Eye for an eye, fuck for a fuck.